Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Today's journey is very, very special. And we are going to visit with Lee Gordon, a Shriner from who is part of the organization that supports the hospital, the Shriners Hospital for Children here in Honolulu. And it is a very special visit and we want all of you to donate, of course. <laughs> but there's more to the hospital than just donating. Lee? Yes. Yeah, there he is. Hi. Hi. Lee Gordon is a dear, dear friend. And you all know I only talk to dear friends. I have known Lee since, I'm not going to try to remember how long it's been. I do. Your daughter was two years old. Now, I don't know, she's a college graduate, right? Um, yes, but you actually knew me with my first daughter. Oh, okay. <laughs> which, who is long since graduated from college. So, so you're getting them both mixed up. <laughs> oh, I did, okay. <laughs> well, they're both pretty girls, what can I say? Over 30 so, years we've known about another. Oh, Lord. Uh, Lee, so tell us about you and your position as a Shriner and what does it mean being a Shriner and how that fits into the hospital, the Shriners Hospital for Children? Well, that can be somewhat confusing for most people in that in order for a person to become a Shriner, they have to first become a Mason. And, you know, with Masonry, you'll see uh, our emblem is the square and the compass. So I first became a Mason and then I became a Shriner. So there's a saying that goes, every Shriner is a Mason, but not every Mason is a Shriner. So the Shrine is actually the philanthropic portion of Masonry. And how it came to be is that Masonry, um, to be quite honest with you, can be a little bit boring. You know, we have a monthly meeting. We do the same things over and over and over. So back in the 1800s, there were a group of doctors that were uh, Masons in New York City. And they thought, you know, this is kind of um, boring. Let's do something fun. So they created a concordant body and they named it the Shrine or for Shriners. And they took on the theme of the Middle East which is why we wear fezes. And uh, if you look at some of the, you know, the drawings that we have and the paintings, you'll see camels and sand dunes. And so it was created for fun. And they actually met in a bar in New York. So that, that'll tell that you what you're looking yeah. for. So that's how it started. Well, um, Hawaii got its charter as a, uh, uh, a shrine tr charter in 1901 and you know for years you know the partying went on everybody had a great time and then the polio epidemic hit which you know just devastated the country and, and the world for that matter so children were dying they were having horrible deformities it was really um, it was pretty bad so these doctors, these very doctors with the Shriners organization said, well, why don't we start a, a children's hospital and treat these kids with polio? So the first hospital was opened in Shreveport, Louisiana in 1922. And to show you how much history Hawaii has with the Shrine, the second hospital was opened in Honolulu in 1923. So we were the second of 22 hospital hospitals to be opened within the hospital system of 22 hospitals. So we have an endowment fund that funds the hospital system and the endowment fund is worth about $10 billion. Wow. And yet we still, the hospitals cost more to run than the, than the endowment spends off in interest. So we're always in deficit spending. So we're always struggling, trying to raise money so that we can provide these services for the kids. Now, obviously polio is no longer a threat, but um, you know the Shrine system pretty much is a pediatric orthopedic hospital. 
So any orthopedic issue that a child has, we can deal with. We also do cleft palate. Um, uh, we have, in Hawaii, we have a dental clinic. Uh, we have an injury clinic that's open every day uh, for kids that may get injured in sports at school. And for a child that cannot afford to pay, they don't have to pay. So we provide the service. We can't say we provide it free of charge because if you do have insurance, we'll accept the insurance. And um, that's pretty much how the hospital works. I mean, I could go more into depth. You know, our hospital here has 165 employees. Um, we service kids from Samoa, from American Samoa, from Tahiti, from um, Guam. Uh, we have serviced some kids from the Philippines, from uh, Japan. So, you know, the Pacific Rim is our geographic territory. Well, so, uh, yeah. my granddaughter, one of my granddaughters, when she was just beginning to walk and Oh, I carried on about her legs. They didn't look right. What's wrong with her legs? And I insisted. So my daughter takes her to Shriners. And the doctor <laughs> looked at me and he looked at, at her mother and he says, Tutu, those are just Asian legs. There's nothing wrong with this child. <laughs> so, so that was my experience with the hospital. Well, if you have any other specific questions, you know, I could tell you a little bit more about the, the facility here. Yeah. You know, we're, we're located on seven acres of land right in the heart of Honolulu, right across the street from Kapi'olani to Women and Children's Hospital. I think we have a picture of the hospital. Yeah. And, yeah. And okay. um, it is a marvelous facility. Yeah. And that property was actually donated to the hospital in perpetuity by the Dowsett family. So as long as it remains a hospital for children, um, we, can, we can stay there. But as soon as that changes, if we try to turn it into a hotel, they can take it back. <laughs> so, so that's not gonna happen. But there's, because there's nothing like it in the Pacific at all. No. No. So we they, they can't, yeah, you something else that differentiates us from the rest of the hospitals in our system is that we actually have a family center. So we can house 17 families on our property. So these families that are coming from far away actually have a place to stay because orthopedic issues are not, it's not like an appendix or appendicitis where you go in one morning and you go home the next. With us, sometimes the kids are here three, four months at a time as they're going after surgery through the rehab process. So it, it does get a little bit expensive. And what the local Aloha Shriners organization as a fraternity is responsible for is paying for their transportation. So the transportation cost to bring these kids here, even from the outer islands and, you know, and like I told you, these faraway places, we spend about $250,000 a year in transporting the kids. And that is what the local Aloha Shriners fraternity is responsible for. And, you know, there are not many of us. There are only about 650 of us. So it's a struggle for us to raise that year after year after year. And, you know, our desire is to actually treat more children, more, more kids in more places. And in order to do that, it's going to take more money because we have to bring, you know, that, that means we'll be buying more and more airplane tickets. So, you know, this appeal to the community to assess, assist us in raising funds is, is, you know, a sincere effort on our part to uh, treat more kids in more places. So couldn't you get, uh, what is it, Hawaiian Air or somebody as a co-sponsor? Oh, that's a wonderful thought. And believe me, we've tried all of that, but... <laughs> You know, it's, you know, every now and then, you know, for a while, Hawaiian actually had a, a mileage program and people could donate their miles mm -hmm. and we could use the miles to transport the kids. But I don't re recall that that's anything we did last year. Of course, last year, you know, COVID year, things kind of 
dropped Everything off. Everything went crazy, yeah. So, but you know, the airline industry does what it can, but you know, there's so many nonprofit organizations that do so many wonderful things for the community that if they do one something for us, then they're able to do it for everybody. And then next thing you know, everybody on the plane is fine for free. So <laughs> they're not up for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, you know, uh, we did talk about the early days. You said the charter in Hawaii was 1901. Yes. But now the, but the king, Kala, Kalakaua, was king a mason. Kala. Yeah, King Kalakaua became a Shriner, actually just right before his death. But he was a member of the Shrine Temple in San Francisco because mm -hmm. we hadn't been chartered when he uh, became a Shriner. However, he was extremely active in masonry here in Hawaii. Um, he was the first uh, 33rd degree Mason in Scottish Rite. He was master of his lodge. Uh, you know, he's he'd just done everything. So, you know, we have masonry, then we have Scottish Rite, York Rite, and the Shrine, which are the three or the three concordant bodies. And he was instrumental in developing all of those, along with his brother-in-law, John Dominus. So the two of them did a lot to help uh, masonry get a foothold here in Hawaii. So now there's, you said Shriners, Scottish Rite, and what else? York Rite. Yeah. You were Scottish Rite? I'm Shriners, Scottish Rite, and York Rite. Oh, <laughs> I'm in all so, of them. Now, what was the, the facility where you had an office in town, not, not at the hospital? That's uh, the Scottish Rite building. I'm the secretary for the Valley of Honolulu. In the Valley of Honolulu. Yeah, it's That's called interesting. The, the <laughs> Valley of Honolulu in the Orient of Hawaii and Graham and, and Guam. And <laughs> illustrious uh, Andrew Geyser is the deputy for our, our Orient. So he's over everything from here to Guam. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's interesting that you, all of that's connected. Oh, yeah. So you're connected all over the world, I presume. Oh yeah, it's an international organization. And Shriners, uh, recently, over the past few years, changed its name to Shriners International. Oh. So now you have that beautiful place in Waimanalo. What, what is that? Uh, that's our beach park. And uh, the beach park um, is available to the general public on Saturdays for rent. So a lot of major companies, corporations in town will rent the property for their company picnics. People will have uh, baby luau's. We've had some people to actually get married out there. So, and then on Sundays, you know, the Shriners or all Masons um, don't believe in doing any work on Sunday. So Sunday is the day we're all out at the beach. So Sunday is beach day at Shriners Beach House. So, but do the children go out there or is this just adults? I mean, the hospital, the hospital children. Well, we, the families of Shriners go out there every Sunday. Uh, the kids at the hospital, we bring them out uh, occasionally. The big time that we bring them is in the summer. It's called the end of summer bash. And we'll have a huge picnic with bouncy houses and clowns and uh, they can go in the water and we feed them. It's a whole, it's a big, big deal. But, you know, and seeing that a lot of them have orthopedic issues, you know, they're in wheelchairs, they're on crutches. So we have to bring, you know, the big buses that have the elevators in the bus to get them up and down. So we don't transport them or move them around too much but we do bring them out there at least once a year for that. Well, it, now, how long, I'm, I'm all confused about this, the kids have, they come from wherever, even locally, and let's assume that they were born with something not correct with their feet or ankles, and they need 
to be corrected so that they can walk perfectly. How long does that take? Does it, is it surgery? Is it, what, what goes on? Uh, well, it can vary, uh, but you know, some issues, especially the kids that are from here, you know, I think when you were talking about maybe their feet going in, you know, kind of towing in, that's a club, it's called club foot. And that can be, if it's not too severe, it can actually be treated without surgery. We can do that with casting. But uh, the surgeries, you know, like if we're doing a scoliosis case where we're doing the implanting titanium rods in their spine to straighten their back, you know, obviously that's pretty invasive and pretty serious. And we can't just send them home right after that because infection is uh, the big fear. So they can be in the hospital sometimes for up to, you know, a month, sometimes two months. Uh, when we're doing limb lengthening, uh, where you're making one leg longer, like if a kid has a limp, uh, that can take a lot longer because we're actually, uh, there's a device that's put on the um, leg called an Elizarov, and the leg is, or the bone is actually cut, and then it cranks out a little bit at a time each day, and, and bone mass matter grows in as that's occurring. So some, those procedures can take two or three months. Oh, I would think so. That's a quite a, that's fabulous that it, it can grow on oh, yeah. its own. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. That, that's amazing. amazing. Amazing what the body can do. It is. Lee, we need to talk about raising funds. So if people want to donate, how do they do that? Well, we have a development director at the hospital by the name of Lori Swan. And if you call the hospital or you go to the website and try to contact Lori, trust me, she'll call you back. Right now, because of COVID, not at, you know, we, we don't have people actually on site except for the nurses and the doctors and the patients. To, so, but she does check her voicemail and email every day. And mm -hmm. Lori's a wonderful person and she, we have so many different ways that you can contribute. I mean, you know, it could be write a check or it could be, you know, like other organizations, it could be a monthly uh, taken out of your bank account of $5 a month or, you know, whatever you want to do. And some people actually will properties and cars and all kinds of stuff to the hospital. So we're open to any type of uh, contribution whatsoever, even if we have to turn it to cash on our own, but you know, beyond that. So like if we get a, a, a condominium donated to us, you know, we obviously can't maintain a condominium. So it would actually be put up for sale and then the monies would come into our coffers to help with our cause. So, but Lori is the specialist and can answer any question that you may have if you have a desire to donate to the hospital. So now are there women members of the Shriners? Well, we have female organizations. We have the Ladies of the Oriental Shrine of North America. We have the Daughters of the Nile. And then not necessarily associated with the Shrine per se, we have the Order of the Eastern Star, which are women. And then there are other organizations, women's organizations that aren't represented here on Hawaii, uh, but they're, they are on the mainland, like the like Job's Daughters, I think, some that I'm not that familiar with, but we have an organization for women, men, girls, the girls are rainbow girls, young boys or Demolay boys. And this is all to, you know, with, especially with the kids to build character, to turn them into responsible citizens uh, responsible, caring citizens. And uh, anymore, it's kind of hard to find people that care. That's true. And what about now with this virus and everybody's not gathering? How, do you have other organ things? Do you Zoom meetings? Do you, what else can you do since we can't go out? 
and just a, I'm just about zoomed out. <laughs> oh, the, the so am I. So am I. So. So you you heard I'm in Scottish Rite, York Rite, yes. Shrine, and Blue Lodge, and yes. they each have meetings. And then if you're on different committees, you know they have meetings. So, and I'm kind of in all of it. So there's at least one Zoom meeting a day, sometimes more. Sometimes more. There's, yeah. There's well, two now day after this. <laughs> but I, since you said it's been 30 years. For as long as I can remember, you have been involved in all kind of organizations and really doing donating time and energy to so many organizations. God love you. It's well, I just follow people like you. <laughs> That's not true, but thank you. It is true. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, but you now you as a business you tune pianos yes but let's not talk about that because i don't want any more piano customers <laughs> I have too many, yeah, so too many. i didn't seen. know people still had pianos oh yes yes so let's keep Did that the, shell, the, the last time we talked about pianos the shell pianos were in such bad shape did they ever get that fixed oh no no, no. They can't fix a bathroom. How are they going to fix a piano? <laughs> That's well, got, of their, their list of priorities. They've got new people in charge, so maybe that'll help. Let's hope so. Yeah, because that's too bad. It's a lovely place to just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not going to talk about pianos, all right? That's no. fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Now, so what else are you doing? Um, well, you know, obviously this was all around the shrine, but, you know, all, we also have uh, one of the organizations that I'm in, which, which we talked about earlier, is uh, the Scottish Rite. And our philanthropy here is uh, what we call the Rite Care Program. And it's dealing with children with uh, speech impediments uh, that are preschoolers before they get into the public school system or private school system. So, and that's another scholarship uh, funded operation that we have here. So if you know of anyone that has a preschooler that's having difficulties with his speech, we're the one, we have extremely well-qualified speech therapists here to work with them. That goes we, have a we have a question from a viewer. Did Shriners have to choose to restrict their help because of COVID. Did you help less kids last year than in 2019? Yes, we. the answer is yes. We, we served fewer children because of COVID. And that's because all of the surgeries that we do are categorized as elective surgeries. And, you know, the government just kind of banned electric, uh, elective surgeries for a while. Um, they, we were just doing essential work, right? So, you know, gunshot wounds, but we don't do that, right? <laughs> so it really hurt us because, you know, everything we do is elective. You don't have to fix or lengthen a limb. You don't have to, you know, uh, straighten a spine, which is kind of crazy, but it did have a negative effect on us. Plus a lot of the kids, you know, we, have, we service the whole state. So kids coming in from Maui and Kauai, you know, were restricted by the travel. So, you know, no one wants to come over here for one day and then get quarantined for 14 days to go back home and then get home and have to quarantine for another 14 days, you know. So it has been very difficult for us, but we've still managed to service the kids. Not as many, but we've still serviced them. Well, you mentioned scoliosis. My uncle, my father's youngest brother, had scoliosis. And um, he, he's 17 years older than me. And when I visit my grandmother, so I was the only three-year-old that knew the word scoliosis, that in those days, he had to be in an iron lung. And it's come so far since then. Yeah, we don't do that anymore. 
Oh, so, as, a, as a matter of fact, uh, we have a, um, an x-ray device. It's called the EOS x-ray machine, which um, is a low dosage x-ray machine. It, it delivers 90% less radiation than a standard uh, radiology visit. And it allows us to actually do a th uh, to turn it into a three-dimensional picture. So, um, yeah, we have some really nice equipment. We have our own orthotics lab, so we make our own uh, prosthetics and braces and everything right there at the hospital. Oh, fabulous. Well, listen, sweetheart, we are down to the very last minute. But again, tell us how to make a donation. Who do we call? Um, what? You want to ask for Lori Suan, and that's S U A N. And if you give me just a second, I'll actually give you the the, the telephone number. Sorry, I should have had that queued oh, up. That's but uh, oh, and now I can't do it. So I'm sorry. But just Shriners Hospital, Honolulu, and ask for the development office, and that would be Lori. And we'll gladly take your call and help you set up a way to, to fund our philanthropy. Well, Lee, as always, it's a pleasure spending time with you. And we will look forward to seeing you after the COVID is over, when we can actually visit. OK. All and right. thank you, thank you uh, Marsha, for the opportunity to shine a light on Shriners to the rest of the community. Well, it's a, it's a fabulous hospital, and thank you. And we'll see you soon. Okay, have a happy new year. Aloha. <laughs>